Bonjour tout le monde et bienvenue à Learn French by Suchita. In today's lesson, we are going to study some commonly used verbs which belong to the category ER verbs. So the topic is commonly used ER verbs. Alright, so here are certain examples of the verb which are ER. The first is the verb habiter. The verb is habiter which means to live. Next is parler. The verb is parler which means to speak. Next, aimer. The verb is aimer which means to like. Next, adore. The verb is adore. To love or you can say to adore. Next, déteste. The verb is déteste which means to hate. Next, Etudier, the verb is etudier, which means to study. Now, from this verb, we have this noun, etudion, which means student. Next verb is chanter, the verb is chanter, which means to sing. From here, we have this noun, une chanson, which means a song. Next, fermi. The verb is fermi, which means to close. So, if I want to say someone that please close the door, we what what will I say? I'll say fermi la porte, s'il vous plaît. The next is tombe. Tombe, which means to fall. Next is visite. The verb is visite, which means to visit. All right, so the next verb is jouer. Jouer means to play. Penser, the verb is penser, which means to think. Préparer, the verb is préparer, which means to prepare. The next is couper. Couper means to cut. The next is inviter, the verb is inviter, which means to invite. Next is déjeuner. The verb is déjeuner, which means to have lunch. Next, dîner. The verb is dîner. Dîner means to dine or to have dinner. Next verb, aider. The verb is aider. Aider means to help. Next is acheter. The verb is acheter, which means to buy. Next verb, monter. The verb is monte. Monte means to climb. Now here, these are somewhat similar verbs, but here we have are. So if you write monte, the meaning is to climb. Here it is montre. The verb is to show. Next, aller. Aller means to go. The next one, donner. The verb is donner. Donner means to give. The next verb, porter. The verb is Porter, porter means to wear, just like we wear clothes. The next verb, now it has an interesting uh, pronunciation. We neither pronounce M nor P. The pronunciation is conte. Conte, conte means to count. Next is decide. The verb is decide. Decide is to decide. Next, touche. Remember, I told you. The pronunciation of ch is sh, so it becomes touche. Touche means to touch. And the last one is accepte. The verb is accepte, which means to accept. As we are Bonjour tout le monde et bienvenue à Learn French by Suchita. Je m'appelle Suchita, votre enseignante de la langue française. Et dans cette vidéo, on va apprendre le verbe vouloir. Dans cette vidéo, on va apprendre le verbe vouloir. So, today we are going to learn the verb vouloir. What do you mean by the verb vouloir? Vouloir means to want. To want. Allez, le verbe vouloir, which means to 
want so now it's a third group verb why it's a third group verb because it is an irregular verb correct it is not conjugated like the normal ir verbs this is an irregular verb i know it's little bit hard to actually conjugate the verb but we'll learn together ne vous inquiétez pas alors alors le verbe vouloir je veux je veux je veux tu veux je veux tu veux il veut elle veut on on veut nous voulons vous voulez ils veulent et elles veulent allez je veux je je ça veut dire i je veux which means i want tu veux you want ça c'est informel OK après il veut il means he so il veut which means he wants elle veut elle c'est féminin elle veut she wants if you have not watched my this video for les pronoms sujets i'm providing the link in the card just go and watch and then come back here again okay so je veux tu veux il veut elle veut remember we don't pronounce x x t t we don't pronounce them so on veut on veut on means v now you must be thinking that no also means v and on also means v but on is used in informal sense that means in general sense we we say on veut nous voulons nous voulons vous voulez you want this is now used in formal sense and then in plural as well vous voulez il veut il c'est pour masculin et uh, if it is a mixed of masculine and feminine supposingly there is a group in which there there are males as well and there are females as well we're going to address them with il so il veut remember we don't pronounce e and t so il veut et elle veut allez on répète il faut répéter après moi OK allez je veux je veux Tu veux Il veut Elle veut On veut Ou nous voulons Vous voulez Ils veulent et elles veulent Now that we have already learned the conjugation of the verb vouloir we are now going to learn its usages so let's begin with the first usage of the verb vouloir après le verbe vouloir il y a toujours un nom when i say toujours uh, that means that's the first usage of the verb vouloir so after the verb vouloir we can put a noun so par exemple je veux un gâteau au chocolat je veux un gâteau au chocolat un gâteau au chocolat that's a noun that means a chocolate cake so i want a chocolate cake you can replace je by any other subject par exemple tu veux un gâteau au chocolat nous voulons un gâteau au chocolat OK ça c'est le deuxième exemple il veut une tasse de thé une tasse de thé that means a cup of tea So he wants a cup of tea. If you want you can say je veux une tasse de thé. Tu veux une tasse de thé. So see, it's a noun, une tasse de thé. Again, I can also ask a question. Est-ce que vous voulez des frites? Est-ce que It's the second way of asking the question. So, est-ce que vous voulez des frites? Do you want some fries? Est-ce que vous voulez des frites Allez. Ils veulent une pizza. Ils veulent une pizza. Vous pouvez aussi dire je veux une pizza. Tu veux une pizza. Il veut une pizza. 
ok vous voulez une pizza so you can replace all these subjects by any other subject as well but the main aim was after the verb vouloir there should be a noun this is the first usage of the verb vouloir now that we have already learned the first usage of the verb vouloir what was that après le verbe vouloir il y a un nom ok there is a noun after the verb vouloir Maintenant, ça c'est le deuxième usage. Après le verbe vouloir, on a le verbe. Mais le verbe a l'infinitif. C'est-à-dire, on ne conjugue pas le verbe après le verbe vouloir. So that means, after the verb vouloir, we do not conjugate the verb. Ok? Par exemple, je veux manger une pizza. You remember in the previous uh, usage, I did je veux une pizza. Even that is correct. That means I want a pizza. But if you want to say I want to eat a pizza, then you will say je veux manger, manger une pizza. You're not going to conjugate the verb after the verb vouloir. Pourquoi? Parce que ça c'est déjà conjugué. Ok? Because this is already conjugated. Je veux manger une pizza. On continue avec le deuxième exemple. Elle veut, elle veut regarder la télé ou la télévision. Elle veut regarder, she wants to watch. Elle veut regarder la télé. On continue avec le troisième exemple. Est-ce que tu veux aller au cinéma avec moi? Est-ce que tu veux aller au cinéma avec moi? Which means, do you want to go to cinema with me? Ça, c'est une question. Est-ce que tu veux aller au cinéma avec moi? Après, vous voulez jouer au golf? Vous, vous voulez jouer au golf? Which means, do you want to play golf? So what I've done in all these examples, après le verbe vouloir, I've written the verb in its infinitive form. Vous voulez jouer au golf? Do you want to play golf? Now you can also make the negative of these sentences. How? Par exemple, euh, elle veut regarder, elle veut regarder la télé. Ça c'est positive. This is positive sentence. If I want to make negative, elle ne veut pas. Elle ne veut pas. So we put ne before the verb, pas after the verb. So elle ne veut pas regarder la télé. She doesn't want to watch the television. So you can make any sentence negative by adding ne and pas before and after the verb vouloir. So now you can make any sentence using the verb vouloir. I want you to make the sentences and write down in the comment section below. So whenever I'll read, I'll get the chance to read the sentences, I'll definitely correct your sentences. Bonjour tout le monde et bienvenue à Learn French by Suchita. Je m'appelle Suchita, votre enseignante de la langue française et dans cette vidéo, on va apprendre le verbe pouvoir. Le verbe pouvoir. Now if you remember in the previous video, we had learned le verbe vouloir and in this video we are going to learn le verbe pouvoir so let's begin what are we going to learn we are going to learn le verbe pouvoir again it's a third group verb why because it's an irregular verb it is not conjugated like the normal verb so le verbe pouvoir which means can ought to be able to. For example, in English I say I can swim or I can run. So the verb is can ought to be able to. So again it's a typical verb but we are going to learn the conjugation together and I would like to give you a hint over here. The verb is just like the verb vouloir. If you remember in the previous video we had learned the verb vouloir, it is conjugated exactly in the same manner. Ok, il faut répéter après moi. Chaque fois vous allez répéter. Je peux. Je peux. Remember it's not pou. Some people say it pou. It's not pou. Je peux. Je peux. Tu peux. Je peux, tu peux, 
Il peut. We are not going to pronounce X, X, T, no. Il peut. Elle peut. Elle peut. It's not elle peut. Elle peut. Elle peut. On peut. On peut. Nous pouvons. Nous pouvons. Ils peuvent. Ils peuvent. Peuvent. We don't pronounce ENT. Ils peuvent. Et finalement, elles peuvent. Est-ce que vous avez répété Si vous avez oublié de répéter après moi, il faut répéter. If you've forgotten to repeat after me, I give you another chance. Repeat after me. Je peux. Tu peux. Il peut. Elle peut. On peut. Nous pouvons. Vous pouvez. Ils peuvent. Et elles peuvent. Now, je peux, which means I can. Tu peux. You can. Remember, it's informal, ok? Il peut. Il peut. He can. Elle peut. She can or she is able to. On peut. On is also V but it is used in informal sense. Nous pouvons, which means we can. Vous pouvez. You all can or you can. Ils peuvent. Ils peuvent, that means they can. Elles peuvent, which means they can. Now that you have already learned the conjugation of the verb pouvoir, we will now begin with its usages. So if you remember, uh, in the previous video, we had taught you the conjugation of the verb vouloir and its usages. So its usages had two. I mean, it, it has two usages. So the first usage was, après le verbe vouloir, on peut utiliser un nom. We can use a noun. And the second usage was, après le verbe vouloir, on utilise un verbe à l'infinitif. But if I compare it to the verb pouvoir, after the verb pouvoir, we cannot have a noun. It is not possible. Okay? So it has only one usage. Après le verbe pouvoir, on doit utiliser le verbe à l'infinitif. Ok? So, these are some of the examples that I've written. Je peux faire, je, je peux faire de la natation. Je peux faire de la natation. Natation means swimming. So, I can do swimming. You can also say, tu peux faire de la natation ou il peut faire de la natation. But the important thing is what? Important thing is that after the verb pouvoir, we do not have to conjugate the verb. Ok? Je peux faire de la natation. Après, tu, tu peux jouer du piano. Tu peux jouer du piano. Piano, which means you can play piano. You can be placed by any other subject. Il peut jouer au piano, du piano, pardon. Nous pouvons jouer du piano ou vous pouvez jouer du piano. Again, I've not conjugated the verb. Est-ce que, est-ce que vous pouvez m'aider, s'il vous plaît? Can you help me please? Now again, after the verb pouvoir, I have not conjugated the verb aider. So, est-ce que vous pouvez m'aider? Can you help me? Now, it's a question that you maybe uh, you can ask to anyone. Je peux boire de l'eau s'il te plaît? Je peux boire. Boire means to drink. I've not conjugated the verb. Je peux boire de l'eau s'il te plaît? Can I drink some water please? Je peux boire de l'eau, s'il te plaît? Allez, on continue avec cinquième exemple. Nous, nous pouvons organiser, organiser une soirée aujourd'hui. Nous pouvons organiser une soirée aujourd'hui. We can organize a party today. Again, I've not conjugated the verb organiser. So, after the verb pouvoir, you never have to conjugate the verb. Okay? Now, tu peux venir quand tu veux. Tu peux venir quand tu veux. Now, if you look carefully, I've used the verb vouloir also, which we learned in the previous video. So, tu peux venir 
quand tu veux. You can come whenever you want to. So tu peux venir quand tu veux. Now these are few examples. You can also make your own examples using the same rule. And you can mention in the comment section below. Whenever I get time, I would, you know, read your comments. And if possible, I will try to correct them also. Bonjour tout le monde et bienvenue à Learn French by Sucheta. Je m'appelle Sucheta, votre enseignante de la langue française. Et dans cette vidéo, on va apprendre le verbe devoir. Le verbe devoir. So, let's begin with the conjugation of the verb, le verbe devoir. Now, if you remember in the previous two videos, we have learned le verbe vouloir et le verbe pouvoir. Now, we are learning the verb devoir. What do you mean by the verb devoir? Which means have to, when there is compulsion that I have to do this thing. For example, I have to uh, do my homework or I must do my homework. So that is have to or must. So let's begin with the conjugation. Je, je dois. Je dois, tu dois, il doit, don't pronounce S, S, T, T, non. Il doit, elle doit, elle c'est féminin, on doit, on doit, nous, nous devons, vous devez, ils doivent, doivent, ils doivent et elles doivent. Allez, il faut répéter. Je dois, tu dois, il doit, elle doit, on doit, nous, nous devons, vous devez, ils doivent et elles doivent. Now, if we focus upon the meanings of this, then je dois. Je means I. Je dois, which means I have to or I must. Tu, tu dois, tu, on utilise pour informel. Allez, tu dois, you have to or you must. Il doit. Il doit, which means he has to or he must. Elle doit, elle doit, which means she has to or she must. On doit, on doit, we have to or we must. Nous devons, we have to or we must. Vous devez, vous devez, which means you have to, you all have to, if you're using it in plural sense okay ils doivent ils doivent that means they must masculine or if there is a mixed uh, group of masculine and feminine then we use ils doivent et après elles doivent elles doivent which means they have to now if you have not watched my previous videos of the verb vouloir and pouvoir i'm giving you the link in the card above please go and watch those videos and then come back to this video again Now that we have already learned the conjugation of the verb devoir, we are now going to learn its usages. So if you remember the verb vouloir, it had two usages. Après le verbe vouloir, on peut avoir un nom, we can have a noun, ou on peut avoir un verbe à l'infinitif. And if you remember the verb pouvoir, I told you, it has only one usage, that after the verb pouvoir, we can have only the verb in its infinitive form. Similarly, après le verbe devoir, we can have only the verb in its infinitive form. So after the verb devoir, we cannot have a noun. We would have a verb in its infinitive form. So these are some of the examples that I've written. Il doit faire son devoir aujourd'hui. Il doit faire son devoir aujourd'hui. That means he has to do his homework today. Or he must do his homework today. Now, if you see carefully, here also I've used devoir. But here it's a noun. It's not a verb. Now, here devoir means 
homework. And here devoir means the verb devoir, which means uh, have to or you can say must. So, il doit faire son devoir aujourd'hui. That means he has to do his homework today. Après, je dois aller à l'école. Je dois aller à l'école. That means I must go to school. I have to go to the school. So, après le verbe devoir, je n'ai pas conjugué le verbe. I have not conjugated the verb faire ou aller. Après, vous devez acheter du bois parce qu'il fait très froid. Parce qu'il fait très froid. Which means because it is very cold. Vous devez acheter du bois. Bois means wood. You have to buy some wood because outside it is very cold. So, vous devez acheter du bois parce qu'il fait très très froid. Allez, on doit travailler dur. On doit travailler dur, which means we must work hard. So, après le verbe devoir, je n'ai pas conjugué le verbe acheter, travailler. Ce sont des verbes à l'infinitif. Après, nous devons partir en voyage. Nous devons partir en voyage, which means we have to or we must leave on a trip or on a journey. Now, these are the few examples that I have written. Again, I would repeat, you have to make the sentences and you can mention in the comment section below so that whenever I get time, I would read them and I would surely try to correct them. Bonjour tout le monde et bienvenue à Learn French by Suchita. Je m'appelle Suchita, votre enseignante de la langue française et dans cette vidéo, on va apprendre le verbe connaître. Ok? Now, the topic is the verb connaître, which means to know. Now, if you remember, in the previous video also, we had learned a verb which meant to know. And the verb was savoir. Ok? So, we have already learned the verb savoir and now we have the verb connaître. Both means to know. So, right now we are learning the conjugation of the verb connaître. In the next video, we shall look what is the difference between the two verbs. Because both means to know. Now, there were three categories of verbs. The verbs were ER, IR and RE. Okay. So, this belongs to the third category, RE verbs. Why? Because this ends with RE. But, it does not follow the normal RE verb rule. Okay, it is there in an exception, so therefore it's an irregular RE verb. Let's learn the conjugation. It is je connais. You will have to learn it like this only. Now, how I have learned it? We are going to cut T R E. So we are going to write till I in all of the cases. We'll write till I. In je, tu, il, elle, nous, vous. Il et elle. I've written till I. Now, one thing to note over here is we have accent circumflex. We have which accent? Circumflex on I. But while conjugating, we'll put this accent only on il and l, nowhere else. Okay? So we are going to write till I in all of the cases and then we are going to put endings. What are the endings over here? S, S, T, T. S S O N S S S O Z S S O N T et finalement S S O N T. Now we shall learn how do we pronounce it. Répétez après moi. Je connais, tu connais, il connaît, elle connaît. Ok? Once again. Encore une fois. Je connais. Tu connais. Il connaît. Elle connaît. Now, pluriel. Nous connaissons. Remember, it is not connaissons. C'est connaissons because we have double S. Nous connaissons. Vous connaissez. Ils connaissent. We do not pronounce E and T. Ils connaissent. 
Et finalement, elles connaissent. We repeat it. Nous connaissons. Vous connaissez. Ils connaissent. Et finalement, elles connaissent. Now, we shall practice the verb connaître with the help of these examples. Ok? Now, je dash cet homme. I know this homme means man. I know this man. How will I fill the, with the verb connaître? What is the conjugation of the verb connaître with je? It is je. I told you we write till I. Je connais. Très bien. Now, elle dash la France. She knows the France. Does she know France? Now, elle. What is the conjugation? We'll write till I. Is it correct? Or is there something missing? There is something missing. I told you that this accent circumflex comes only in il ou elle. Elle connaît la France. Vous dash cette boulangère. You know this baker. So, what is the conjugation with vous? Réfléchissez. Vous, you will write till I. Vous connaissez très bien. Double S, E, Z. Vous connaissez cette boulangère. The next is tu dash mon adresse. You know my address. So, tu, again you will write till I. Tu connais mon adresse. The next is, they dash this poem. They, they know this poem. So that is, we are going to write till I. What is the ending? ENT? No, it is double S ENT. And the pronunciation is, il connaît ce poème. Now try to find some more sentences and practice the verb connaître. Getting a lot of queries regarding the complete course content for our school children, college going and especially for DELF preparations. So soon we are launching the complete course content on our website learnfrenchbysuchita.com which include the exclusive unlisted YouTube videos along with the audio files and PDFs which will help you to take the French to the higher level. So stay connected, bon courage et bonne continuation.